Hey guys, Mr. Schwanekamp back again. Today we are finding all of the roots of a poly polynomial. So the difference between what we're doing in this section and the last section. The last section I told you something like, hey, two is a root or negative three is a zero. And then from there we had to find the rest. Well, for this lesson, I'm not telling you anything. You have to be able to just find all of the roots, find all of those x-intercepts on our own. So it's a little bit different, but at the same time, it's not any different. It's just a matter of finding that first one. Once we find one, then from there on out, it's pretty easy. So let's see what we can do. So again, we are trying to find all of the zeros of a polynomial given none of them. And so that would be hard, okay? So if I just gave you a random like x cubed plus three x squared minus two x plus nine, I just made up a problem. This problem is gonna have three zeros. Okay, and technically, if we didn't know, we could say it's any number in the entire world that could be a zero for this. Well, that's a lot of numbers. So it would be nice if we could narrow it down. Think about being in a Spanish class or, an, or a social studies class and you get a little ant or a little uh, answer box, not an answer box. What am I trying to think of? Uh, answer bank. And you have a little box of answers here and you got this answer and this answer and this answer. And to fill in the blanks, you pick one of those. It makes it a lot easier. Well, that's what we're doing here, okay? We are going to make an a answer box here. We're gonna to try to come up with some different choices that could possibly work, all right? So if we wanna find all the real zeros of this polynomial right here, we're first going to find any number that might work. And the way we're going to do that is by finding the P's and Q's, all right? So to do that, when we say P, P represents the constant at the end of this problem. So this is going to be our P. The Q represents the first number in our set. So in this case, the, the leading coefficient, it's gonna be a five. In addition to 10 and five, I'm going to list all of the factors of 10. So what numbers multiply together to get 10? Well, 10 and five and two and one. All of those five and two multiply to get 10, 10 and one multiply to get 10. No other numbers in the entire world multiply to get 10. What numbers multiply to get five? Well, only five and one. That is the list of every number that can multiply to get one, or to get five. So what that means is we're going to take this P's and Q's and we are going to do an extensive list of all of the P's divided by all of the Q's. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go plus or minus because it could be a positive or a negative version of these numbers. And I'm gonna take each number in this list and divide them by that list. And it seems kind of crazy, it's not really that bad. So I always like to go from smallest to biggest just to make myself happier. So I'm gonna go one divided by one, which would be one. Then I'm gonna do two divided by one, which would be two. Five divided by one, which would be five. And 10 divided by one, which is 10. I have just done every possible combination over the number one. Then I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna take all the numbers divided by five. So one divided by five is one fifth. Two divided by five is two fifths. Five divided by five would be one. I already have it listed, so I don't need to list it again. And then 10 divided by five would be two. I already have it listed. I don't need to list it again. So what that means is this polynomial is going to have three zeros, okay, three zeros. And out of all of the numbers in the entire world, our answer is going to live in that box. There's gonna be three answers. And if it's a real rational, so rational means you can write it as a fraction, like it could be some crazy decimal, but we're not gonna do something like that. Uh, if it's a number that doesn't repeat, that's an irrational number. We're not doing that. These are rational numbers. If it's a real rational number, then the answer is in this list. Kind of is weird and it'll make more sense here in a second. Let's do it again. All right, we're not gonna do a billion of these, let's do two more. So looking at this polynomial, we're gonna identify the possible zeros. Or in other words, we're going to list all the possible rational zeros of each function. When you see that list the possible rational zeros, that is P's and Q's. So remember the P is the last number, and all of the numbers that multiply to get nine, well nine, three, and one, those are the only numbers that multiply to get nine. And Q is the first number, and all of the numbers that multiply to get two, so two and one. Once we've got our P and Q list, now we're gonna find P's over Q's. It is going to be plus or minus. 
and we're going to take all of these numbers divided by these numbers. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 9 divided by 1 is 9. 1 is done. Now we're going to go to 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. 9 divided by 2 is 9 halves. If our answer is a real rational number, then it is going to be in this list. If our solutions, if our roots are real rational numbers, it's in that list. Okay, and you'll see again here in a second what that means. Let's do one more. Let's jump down here to letter C. So P and Q. P is the last number, and all of the numbers that multiply to get 12. So 12, I like to put them in order. You don't have to. 6, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Those are all the numbers that multiply together to get 12. My Q is the first number, so 3 and 1. Now I'm going to do P divided by Q, and I'm just going down the list. 1 divided by 1. So hang on, I forgot my plus or minus, sorry. Plus or minus 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 3, 4, 6, and 12. All of those are divided by 1. I'm done with that. Now I'm going to divide by 3. So 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. Don't need that. That's just 1. 4 thirds. Six-thirds, well, six-thirds is just two, don't need that one. And then 12-thirds, well, 12 divided by three is just four, don't need that. Out of every number in the entire world, our rational zeros are in that list. That's still a lot of numbers, but it's a whole lot less than every number in the entire world. That's a, that's a smaller number, all right? So let's use this to our advantage, all right? We're gonna find all of the rational, find all of the zeros for this polynomial. X cubed plus four X squared minus 25 X minus 28 we are going to solve that thing. We're going to find its zeros, okay? Its roots, its solutions. So we know that there's going to be three answers because it's x cubed, all right? So we're going to have three, three solutions. My P, to do this, we could just start from scratch, but it's way easier if I have a list of numbers. So 28 is going to be my P. My Q is just going to be one. And the good news here is my P is 28, 14, 7, 4, two, one. Is that all of them? I think so. Yep, we're good. That's all my numbers I can multiply together to get me 28. So the good news is my P over Q list is plus or minus. I'm just dividing by one. So it's one, two, four, seven, 14, and 28. So out of every number in the world, my answer lives in that list. So now what we're going to do is we are going to decide which of these numbers actually work for this polynomial. So I am doing guess and check. So I'm going to do synthetic division just like we did in the last section. But I don't know what's the right answer. So I am testing them to see if I get zero. If I get zero, it works. If not, I do it again. And so what would be the easiest number to check? Well, I want to check the easiest possible number, which is one. So I'm going to do synthetic division. Bring down the one, multiply by one. Add four plus one is five, multiply five. Add 25 and five is 30. Multiply, 30 times one is 30, ah, uh, boo, I got two. So because I got two, I know that one is not a root, but that doesn't help me yet. So darn, I have to do it again. And so my first number didn't work, I'm one is not gonna work, it is not gonna be a zero. Let's try another number. So if one doesn't work, I would always suggest going back and forth with the smallest numbers, because I'm not uh, the meanest person in the world, I'm not picking like, 28 as the first number that works. So I always like to start with the small ones. Now I'm going to try negative one. Drop my one, multiply, add negative one times three, negative three. I do something wrong. Bring the one down, multiply, add negative three. 25 minus three is 22. Negative 22. Boo. Didn't work. I might have screwed that up. I feel like that. I feel like I did something wrong there. Oh, I did do something wrong. Oh, how dare I! I forgot a negative sign right here. I wondered. I thought I wouldn't be that mean. I forgot my negative on the 25. So that would have affected this one a little bit. I mean, this would have been 20, but this still didn't get me an answer. This is negative 8. Sorry. So I'm guessing that negative one was supposed to work. I was going to say that was too close to not work. Let's try this again. Drop that one. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. <gasps> Watch it. Yay. I got zero. So that is our best news. Yay. That's why I put a smiley face on my uh, roots, because if I got it, then I've got a great answer here. This was an X to the third problem. 
So negative 1 is a root. If it was an x to the third problem, that makes that an x squared problem. x squared plus 3x minus 28. And if we're doing it right, we should know how to solve this thing now. So to solve this thing, we just factor. We're going to factor this thing into x plus 7 and x minus th uh, 4, sorry. And I solve it. I get x is equal to negative 7, x is equal to 4, and my other answer, which was x is equal to negative 1. Those are my three answers. I knew there were going to be three answers because it was an x cubed problem. And guess what? Each one of my answers is in this list. If I got a number that wasn't in that list, I knew I made a mistake somewhere else. Hope that makes sense to you. But we just went through, we found a number that worked, and then we went from there. All right, let's do one more here. And then I'm going to probably make up a, th a third one here because I think we need uh, a, a fourth example as this. So my P is 45. My Q is 1. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the list here. So my plus or minus 1. Uh, four, 2 doesn't go into 45. 3 does. 4 doesn't. 5 does. 9 does. 15 does. 45 does. Those are my list. Okay, out of every number in the entire world, that's what's going to work here. Okay, so I'm going to do synthetic division. I got 1, negative 5, negative 9, 45. I'm going to start off with the number, uh, let's start with 1. Drop the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, and I, I'm just going to stop here. Ah, it didn't work because 13, 45 is not going to get me there. All right, so 1 didn't work, so let's try it again, negative 1. Drop that 1. I get negative 6, multiply 6. Negative, nah, not going to work. Three, didn't work. Darn, we're 0 for 2. Should I try 2 next? No, don't try 2 because it's not in my list. So I tried 1 and negative 1. Then normally I would try 2 and negative 2, but it's not in my list. So next I'm going to go to 3. And I hope 3 works because otherwise I'm going to cry. Negative 6. <gasps> negative 9 plus negative 6 is negative 15. 3 times negative 15 is negative 45. Woohoo! I get 0. I got to draw a smiley face. I got to be happy about it. So we got that answer right there. Then we are going to solve the rest of the way. So this is a root. It was an x cubed. So this is 1x squared minus 2x minus 15. I'm going to solve this thing. I can factor a square. So I'm going to make this into x minus 5 and x plus 3. So my roots, my zeros, my solutions our x is equal to 3, 5, and negative 3. Out of every number in the entire world, those are my x-intercepts. I could go to Desmos and graph this thing, and I know I'm going to touch it in those three spots. All right, let's try one more. I, I'm going to make one up here uh, just because I feel like we need one more. One second. All right, let's try one last one here. Let's say I gave you this polynomial. So x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 9. Okay, so a little bit weird. How many answers am I going to have? Well, I will have four answers because it's x to the fourth power. All right, let's start off by doing p's and q's. My p is just 9, and all the numbers that multiply to get 9, so 9, 3, and 1. My q is just 1, so my p over q list is going to be plus or minus 1, 3, and 9. Out of every number in the entire world, those are the only numbers that could possibly work. Once we've got that set up, now we're going to do synthetic division. So be careful here when you set this up. 1x to the fourth, 0x cubed, negative 10x squared, 0x, and a 9. I needed two spacer zeros because there wasn't an x cubed and there wasn't an x term. Let's do some synthetic division. Let's start off with the number 1. 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Add. I got zero. Hooray. This was an x to the fourth problem. So this is an x cubed problem. This is what this means. And unfortunately, I really don't know how to solve that yet. We could do factor by grouping. If that's something that you're comfortable with doing, you could do some factor with grouping. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm just going to keep going. So synthetic division is still going to work. The numbers in this list are still going to apply to this one. If one worked, great. I'm going to use these four new leading coefficients and just continue the process. If one worked, now I'm going to try negative one. Drop the one. Multiply. 
add, multiply, add, multiply, add. I got zero. Hooray, that is also working. So roots at one and negative one because both of them got me zero. That's two answers. This was x to the fourth. Then I got x cubed. Now I've got x squared. So this means x squared minus nine. To find my last two answers, I just need to solve this quadratic. x squared minus nine, I'm gonna set it equal to zero. I'm gonna add nine. I'm going to square root x is equal to plus or minus three. So my solutions, my roots, my zeros, my x-intercepts are going to be x is equal to one, negative one, three, and negative three. These are the four places that my graph is gonna cross the x-axis. Notice that all of them are in my p's and q's list. If I went to Desmos and typed this thing in, x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus nine, I've got one, two, three, four zeros. That's exactly what we're trying to do, all right? It's a weird concept at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty powerful. It allows us to find those zeros pretty quickly, and that's often a very important concept when it comes to math and especially applying it to the real world. Hope that helps. If you need some more help, just ask, please.